This might be the most insane headline I've seen in post-Roe America. This is from Vice News. Woman may be forced to give birth to a headless baby because of an abortion ban. I mean, this is now a thing in the United States of America. This is about a woman in Louisiana. And because of that state's abortion ban, even though she knows about a fatal fetal defect, she might not be able to do anything about that it's insane so let's get to the story here it was at her first ultrasound that nancy davis said she learned there was no way the baby about whom she'd once been so excited would ever grow up it was an abnormal ultrasound and they noticed the top of the baby's head was missing and the skull was missing the top of the skull was missing davis told local news outlet wafb9 in a story published monday quote it's hard knowing that i'm carrying it to bury it you know that i'm you know what i'm saying yeah i mean like if you're excited to become a mother and you find out that the fetus is not going to survive that's got to be absolutely devastating i've talked about a lot of stories about women having miscarriages and these abortion ba bans are affecting them as well. But now, this pain that she's feeling, knowing that she won't be a mother, is compounded by her state's absolute draconian abortion ban that is going to affect her. So Davis said she was 10 weeks into her pregnancy at the time of her ultrasound, but is unable to get an abortion in her home state of Louisiana thanks to the state's near total ban on the procedure. Her only options, she said, are to either carry the pregnancy to term or go out of state for an abortion. So she's 10 weeks into the pregnancy. So that's the options. Carry around the baby for another seven and a half months or go out of state. Like the problem with this out of state solution is that it's not necessarily a solution for everyone because people don't have the money to travel. That costs money. You need resources to be able to travel. And also, it's incredibly inconvenient. A lot of people don't like traveling. I, for one, hate traveling. So to put women who are already going through a traumatic experience through this, it's just, it's so cruel. And these people who enact these laws and support politicians who enact these laws, they have the audacity to call themselves pro-life when they subject mothers to things like this. It's despicable. In the weeks since the Supreme Court overturned uh, Roe v. Wade, abortion access has flickered in the state as abortion rights supporters have fought to keep the procedure legal. On Friday, however, Louisiana Supreme Court ruled to let the state's near total abortion ban remain in effect. Yeah, lovely. The ban does not have exceptions for abortions in cases of rape or incest. That in and of itself is insane. And I just want to be 100% clear here. These exceptions... Like, they're not actually that great. Because even if you have these exceptions, as we've learned with stories from Texas, doctors are still really apprehensive about doing procedures on women with miscarriages. Or even in the case of incest, because, you know, how do you prove that this was incest? How do you prove that, you know, um, a woman had a miscarriage? So they're so terrified about removing the dead fetus in these instances or the live fetus in the case of rape or incest that, you know, they either don't do the procedure at all, so therefore essentially eliminating the exception, or they subject women to, you know, a huge marathon of things. Okay, get an ultrasound tomorrow and then get one a week from now. Get it from a different provider. So that way in the event they're accused of performing an abortion on a live fetus, they kind of have some you know uh, evidence to support themselves in court but even if they had to defend themselves in court that's very expensive so it would bankrupt them so these exceptions functionally they're useless in many instances so you know it's disgusting that they don't even have exceptions for abortion uh in the cases uh in the cases of rape or incest but even in states that have them it's not that much better Sure, it exists, and that's good, but in the way that the law, or the effect that the law is having on doctors and women, 
it makes that exception, you know, effectively useless in many instances. Abortions are now only permitted to prevent the death or substantial risk of death due to a physical condition or to prevent the serious permanent impairment of a life-sustaining organ of a pregnant woman. Earlier this month, the Louisiana Department of Health released a list of medical conditions that would make a pregnancy medically futile and clear the way for pregnant people to get an abortion. At the time, medical professionals criticized the list as incomplete. So, yeah, it, like this list is important, but still um, there are issues with this because you have lawmakers who don't know what the fuck they're talking about trying to, you know, create laws about women's bodies when they're not women and they, they don't know about women's anatomy. They don't know about human anatomy. Like these are folks who had abstinence only education. So I don't even know if they know what sex is. So that's that's the people who's making these laws. But either way. Quote, I can already see things are missing on this, Dr. Rebecca G, an OBGYN and the former Louisiana Secretary of Health, told NOLA.com. I can name one, and I've just looked at this list for 30 seconds. Davis told WAFB9 that her pregnancy has been impacted by a condition known as acrania. It is not explicitly mentioned on the Department of Health's list, although that list does include a broad exception for other types of anomalies, as long as two physicians deem that anomaly valid. So, you know, sure, there's an exception. How reasonable. But you have to make that woman jump through hoops. She has to get two opinions. And let me remind you that in our country, healthcare is very fucking expensive. So I don't know if this woman lives in a more rural area, but perhaps she only has one doctor in her network. That means she's going to have to go out of network and pay much more money, assuming she even has insurance. So, you know, even if we had a universal healthcare system and any functioning healthcare system, this would be unacceptable. Well, the fact that we don't have a functioning healthcare system, it makes it that much more egregious. Several other states have also now implemented abortion bans that include exemptions for medical emergencies, but these bans often have deferring, nuanced language that doctors have told Vice News fails to take into account the complexity of pregnancy and the medical conditions that can affect it. These kinds of bans can leave doctors flailing, unsure of what their legal risks are or how to care for patients in crisis. And this is the problem. That's the reason why these exceptions are insufficient. Because when you have these exceptions here, again, there's so much legal gray area. It's ill-defined. Doctors don't know what is and isn't permissible or what might get them in hot water. We talked about how there was a teenager who is uh, being pursued by her state's attorney general because Facebook gave her DMs, which contained evidence that she got an abortion on a live fetus. And she told the cops that she had a miscarriage. Now, that was actually a lie. She didn't have a miscarriage. But the cops still decided to pursue her anyway. So, you know, in an instance where a woman claims that she is the victim of incest, I mean, what's to stop a cop from believing? Just saying, oh, okay, sure. They could still pursue it. The doctor who did that abortion in the case of incest could still potentially have to defend themselves in court. It's a very draconian, antiquated system and what it ultimately comes down to is um, an effective witch hunt against women and doctors. In 2022 in America, it, it's sickening. Davis, who already has a child, has refrained from taking a position on abortion, WAFB9 reported. She said she is now 13 weeks into her pregnancy. I just want them to consider special circumstances as it relates to abortion medical programs, Davis said. Like this is one that needs to be, you know, what I'm saying in there. Yeah, so... At the time that I record this, we don't have any updates on what she was able to do. It seems like she's kind of shit out of luck unless she chooses to go out of state. But she shouldn't have to go out of state. The fetus doesn't have a head. There is a 0% chance that that fetus is going to survive. But yet, in her state, because of its abortion laws, nothing. Uh, really important point, Shade, uh, Shade Dragon. Heads up, Signal is encrypted. If you need a secure messaging app, use Signal. Yeah, really, really important point. And I just want to emphasize once again that if you are communicating with people about abortion or your reproductive health, please do not do so online. If you're, go if you're going to do that, use an app like Signal that's encrypted. Do not use Facebook Messenger. And really, the more safe thing that you could do, I guess, is 
talk to people in person, right? Talk to your doctor in person if you can't do that. And I get that it's inconvenient, but this is for your own protection. And if you have a period tracking app, which a lot of people do because these are very popular, please delete that because that could one day be evidence used against you in the event you're accused of getting an abortion on a live fetus. So, you know, in this day in America, in this age in America, in post row America, we have to do everything in our power to protect women. And that means we inform women and emphasize the need to take these kinds of precautions because, you know, when it comes down to, you know, stories like this, this goes to show you how extreme we are. And I can't show you because the ad is blocking it. But, you know, when women are uh, potentially forced to give birth to headless fetuses, things aren't looking good.